Hi guys, I want to make another attempt at an astrological video. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. I'm not sure how long it is going to be, uh, but I will have a try because um, over the past five or six days or so, uh, I've had a bit of a throat problem and just a little virus and a bit of a flu. And uh, so maybe you can hear that. And I'm not sure how long my voice will last because I tend to have a bit of coughing now and then. Um, however, um, last Friday I talked to you about the uh, position of the moon in the horoscope and I promised that I was going to get back to you with the black moon in the signs and um, try to, you know, give my, um, my impressions of that state of things. And so what I did this morning, I want to get back to the oil painting. Of course I do. I want to go back to actual painting in between parentheses here. But um, I'm still a bit tired and uh, I thought I should uh, prefer preferably have lunch first at least. And then we will see what happens. But uh, at this moment, it's um, just past 12 in the, in the afternoon. And um, I thought I might just as well try have a go at this black moon thing because it's actually rather different. I find it is completely um, different. Where our uh, lunar apogee is in a horoscope is a, a completely different, um, creates a different set of circumstances for us from the position of the actual moon itself so to yeah let's let's just see what happens okay i made a list of uh people that i know fairly well or that i've known all my life where i could uh suddenly see that some people have actually the same or almost the same lunar apogee uh, position in their charts my mother-in-laws, both of them, had the same uh, actually exact uh, lunar apogee, which was um, the position of Jupiter in their husband's chart. So my dad-in-law, okay, had uh, his Jupiter in both cases. On the uh, he chose a woman in both cases, or he was chosen by a woman in both cases consecutively, <laughs> um, who had her black moon where his Jupiter was in, uh, in Aries at uh, around 19 degrees. Fairly close, I think less than a degree difference. That's what I'm looking at in these type of, uh, of aspects. Of course, there's, uh, this is the, uh, what I'm looking at here is the, um, what should we call it? The, um, the average of the of the black moon that any chart will give you or the astro.com charts uh, will give you for a person that is not the oscillating black moon because that's a whole different ball game right you have uh, all these if you're trying to uh, sort of evolve from there to the actual um, movement in the relationship between the sun, the earth and the moon and you look at the geometry of that then often you get a completely different position and up to um, like it goes into the other sign, into the next sign so there's something else to think about when we are uh, working on our black moon understanding right there the fact that there's like this average position which tends to I think work culturally in that to that extent that it often way too often for me to uh, ignore it actually uh, links people together to a particular um, to people so you get whole networks of people through the generations through marriages and through the generations on the other side of the marriage several times down to the children down to the children's children where the same position comes back again and again so um that's pretty um that's what got me started really on all this uh, 
this black moon stuff is that there are just um, recurring uh, people who have um, this person has uh, the Sun in that position another person has mercury in that position number three or four has uh, the black moon right there so then the black moon thing incorporates in another um, frame that endlessly repeats through through the generations that's more or less what I'm trying to say uh, with that However, I kind of wanted to see whether I could do the same thing for the black moon as I did for the real moon, let's call it that, um, to identify, sort of, the, um, the issues, where, what we face when we are human, okay? <laughs> That's more or less what it is that I'm trying to talk about here, is that we are connected by our lunar apogee, whichever one, whether you're talking about the regular average one or the actual oscillating one, in some f shape or form, we are deeply connected to other people, to our relatives, to our partners, to our friends even. And we react to each other. We react to each other not only uh, because of the ascendant sign, the rising sign in our chart, which makes us look in one way or another it makes us superficially on the outside makes us look like a Libra or like a Leo when in fact we are not so that's one um, one track to be on 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 the inside of that we strongly and persistently react to people in sensitive ways in ways that uh, make sense um, only really if you look at it with the black moon, with the lunar apogee in mind. Then all of a sudden, a lot of things start making sense. And that's why I'm making these videos. I, I think it's fascinating. And I also think I have uh, carried around my backpack of misery myself um, as a consequence of this, because I was, um, you know, I was completely set up for my parents to be very sensitive to to their situations that I couldn't do anything about. My personal black moon is in Pisces, whether you take the, uh, the official one, the average one, state-approved one, if you like, at 14 degrees Pisces, or the oscillating one, which will be more towards 21 degrees uh, Pisces. In both cases, per personally, I have read uh, bits and pieces here and there on the internet, there isn't that much. Uh, where people uh, call this the the space in between those two positions, they call the black moon corridor. And there's, you can, I don't know, I think there's books published about that type of thing. But I believe in knowledge being out there and free and uh, accessible to all, if possible. So, um, yeah, maybe you can, if, you, if you're deeply inter interested in this type of thing, you should uh, maybe look up a black moon corridor and, or Lilith corridor or something like that. However, um, the Pisces sign, of course, is at the end of the, of the zodiac. So um, maybe I should really go back to Aries and attempt this, you know, tale of 12, like I did for the moon. And most of this I haven't really sort of tried to make uniform in my mind yet. So I am doing it. Uh, straight off the press. If this is coming as it is going, you are having it, okay? <laughs> I'm letting you have it. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I'm trying to see the common points in the sensitivities between the few people. There are a few signs that I have a lot of people for. So I have a lot of people for um, 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 Gemini. I have three people. I have four, five people, I think, for cancer, different positions. And I have four p positions for people who have positions of the apogee in Leo. And then I have four, three people in Libra and a couple more. And there's three people in Pisces. So those are the signs that are really that I should maybe be able to say something about. Um, Gemini, K, 
Cancer, Leo and Libra and Pisces. So there are no earth signs in there, strikingly. So it's going to be a lot harder to say anything about uh, about those, about the earth signs, for example. Or, um, yeah, I will just have to uh, sort of try and figure it out from... What I'm trying to do is to sort of feel what those people have in common. And it's difficult because some of them are men and some of them are women. So, yeah. A sudden, I suddenly have this, there's a, an idea falling into my head. Rather than going, starting at Aries, there's people that I don't really know ex all that well. I might be able to come back to them later in, in 10 years time, if I, if I, <laughs> if we live that long, to, um, to say more about them or because I've figured out more or maybe next week. I don't know, because suddenly things are becoming clearer. I am seeing very high levels of sensitivity here. So it's always the thing nobody wants you to know, of course. The thing we don't want them to know about, because if they know about it, they can hurt us. That's the, that's the clue of the lunar apogee. So... The thing that fell into my head, I was looking here at my list, I'm looking at the Gemini people, my husband, my grandfather uh, on my dad's side, long gone, but I remember bits of him, enough I think, especially being a, ch a kid back then, I kind of have a, I suppose I have a rather fair intuitive memory file of him somewhere, and number three in that category is um what do you call that her uh she's a she's a like a cousin of ours of my husband's really so i am thinking suddenly that there is an obligation for the um anything to do with gemini there's an obligation to share and maybe that's hard for those people there's a necessity, a need to share, but it's also blocked. And maybe that's how it works. Maybe it's it works because people get a need foisted on them, which is at the same time made into something that is excruciatingly difficult for them. The um, It's not an impossibility to share. It's just like it's the most important thing to them, really. With the black moon in Gemini, that's what I get. A sense that the need to share is uh, overpowering, really. And because we can't deal with things that are overpowering to us, you know, we just, it's, it's like, it's alive. The, the whole zodiac, the planets, the influences, the, the sun and the moon and the earth and all of it is alive within us. And we are like, our personalities are like a instant snapshots, but they are not simple at all. They're really deep and really, they show how we are connected to the universe around us, right? Something like that. So, yeah. So that's for the Gemini thing. That, that is hard to share, but it's what you really need most. But it will tear you apart if you, if you don't do it, and it'll tear you apart if you do do it. So... Having issues there. And of course, let me stress again, um, it also very much depends on where that person's ascendant is, whether that's a really, um, you know, solid, like, a, for example, a Virgo or a Capricorn ascendant for this type of person. Uh, they don't go into that type of nonsense. So it will be harder for them to get at their apogees. There's a difference. Not everybody's black moon is readily accessible to themselves to bring alive. Not necessarily intellectually or mentally, just in their lives. And for some others, it'll be right there. It'll be right on their table and they have worked with it and lived with it uh, all their lives. So then you get a different story, right? There's a difference. There's a difference whether 
the ascendant and or I believe also imp is important uh, Mercury helps you to communicate to make uh, into a sense of a formula to objectify some people need that other people need that a lot less all that stuff is important um, whether one the one thing that I have found in people's charts um, over the past 30 years or so that I've worked with this stuff is that quite often you will find groupings in a chart a chart will show like a almost like it's made up out of two halves and the for example the sun the moon neptune and blah will uh, have a nice pattern going and there's a completely different pattern with mercury and venus in the ascendant and a couple of other things and they don't mix it's like they belong to two different people almost and you very often see that the people have hidden identities they have parts of identities that function beautifully in the workplace and they're quite fine and they, you cannot say you're not okay in the workplace you're fine in the workplace but it is a part of you and the other part of the person needs to be by himself in nature uh, needs to, to exercise and do sports and stuff, needs to, I don't know, anything, be creative, read a lot, um, needs new information, whatever. And all that type of thing can be completely unrelated to any of the, um, to any of the workplace things. As long as you have certain points in your chart that harmonize with um, the, the the stuff that they need from you at the workplace you are going to have satisfaction from that from contrib contrib con yeah, contributing that's the word your energies uh, and your capabilities to the workplace it's going to be completely satisfying but not completely satisfying because if your moon or your black moon or your whatever is in the wrong spot, it's still going to be, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're still going to figure, wonder what the hell am I doing wrong and that type of question. That's a typical black moon question right there. So from Gemini, I want to go over to Cancer because I think actually with my parents having that position and there's a couple of others, the, uh, the, the black moon in Cancer. I think has a problem uh, not so much sharing with other people as feeling itself part of a of a group or a home the people with black moon in cancer are homeless people by nature and to some extent they are proud of it they want not to identify with all that homey stuff so they're gonna hate Christmas and <laughs> that type of thing. It's just not their thing. So, um, but there's a lot of also of not sharing there. It's the same and it's completely different because the uh, where the, the Gemini aspects, the Gemini traits are so much more individualistic and so much more um, about um things that we know things that we have um yeah things that we can be sure of and cancer isn't about that at all it's really about being part of a group it's a water sign so plooch we are submerged right so there's no individualism um in that right unless of course you are a cancer and then it's a different ballgame because then your challenge is to be an individual as a cancer. There's a, there might be, and people don't understand that because individualism is defined by the Aries and the Sagittarius and the Leo types in the world and in the society. And they're telling you, you're doing everything wrong because you are. On the other hand, they profit from how you look after them. So maybe they will uh, let you be, let you be a cancer. 
Um, I don't think cancers are very insecure people at all. They have, uh, they have got their roots uh, firmly established. From there, the Leo. The Leo, um, 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 the Leo Black Moon is a different uh, situation again because the people, I am a Leo myself, so I have triggered them. I trigger people who have their apogees in there by my solar position, my sun nature. And I've always felt um, like I was the wrong kind of person. And they, um, they hated my guts. <laughs> Basically, they didn't like me. They couldn't live with me. They couldn't stand me for more than 10 minutes or so. Because I was, you know, way too confident and way too blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And, but it's hard for me to realize or to feel why should it even be possible. I think that it's possible to feel what the other guy is feeling. Yes, I do. But I have to sort of you know separate out everything that's my own reaction to them and there is a black moon thing again i have to not allow myself to be swallowed up black moon in pisces by their situation and so on and so forth so somewhere in the middle i would say they're afraid the black moon in Leos are afraid that they will be challenged to be an individual. To be, to them, independence and sovereignty are very much a two-edged sword. They're afraid it won't be allowed. Hmm. If you're afraid that things aren't going to be allowed, and you don't question that. And you... Then, of course, that's a gaping hole for any any societal organization or any societal structure or any structure of belief or any religion or any, uh, any parent to hit you over the head and have this huge, massive influence over you because you yourself with your black moon in Leo, are leaving the door wide open. You're not sure you're supposed to be an individual at all. This I did not know or think of or believe when I started this video. This is what I like best about these type of talks, is when I, I just dive in and uh, who knows what's going to come out, right? I hope there's people out there who enjoy this type of thing because <laughs> I think it's hysterical. Um, 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 yeah, enough about that. I am going to do one more, uh, the Libra, because the Libra sign is my ascendant as well, my rising sign. And I have three people, three women, who have a uh, black moon in, um, in the thing, in Libra, right there. And of course, now I have skipped one sign. I have skipped the Virgo, okay? So maybe I can do another one where, another video where I do the... Uh, the bits that I haven't done so far yet. And maybe I can actually uh, at some point um, unscrew some more of this information or of this of these uh, of these interpretations. Um, the I always think that the Libra sign is the start of this, like I said in the in the moon um, series, the moon video last week um, it's where it gets a lot more complicated and it's a lot more challenging the life that you have suddenly has to involve a lot of other people and a lot of sensitivity to what other people are doing and you're much more um, it doesn't have to be emotional you're just aware of them they're there and they're do doing things and the influences of the of them together and the patterns and all that are very much more in your consciousness than they are when you are in the summer half of the zodiac with your moon okay with the black moon in libra uh, as we were already talking about quite dark stuff and about being afraid and about being insecure and uh not having uh, yeah just viscerally and intuitively having this um, constant, like a 
puddle of cold water in there's got to be a puddle of cold water in there somewhere we all have it um maybe it's about distrust the apogee the black moon in libra really has to do that you have a a hard time uh trusting people in general or trusting human nature there's a fundamental that's a big uh, pronouncement to be making even for me um yeah maybe there's just very great insecurity there there's just a a sense that it um it won't um it won't sort itself out we and and we can work and work at things and we will still we will fail at achieving this balance that libra is all about right we will um that's more or less what i see here so um depending on as aspect to this black moon position my grandmother on my father's side had a grand cross with a black moon as one of the one of the points and i suddenly realized that this other person who has the same black moon i believe it's actually the same not the same exact degree but close enough she also has a grand square with i don't remember exactly which ones it were but the cancer position the Capricorn position and the Aries position, right? So there's a grand square with a at least four or five or six uh, planets engaged in sort of what I see for both those people, those women, is like there's this um, shell, like um, armor of fossilized needs for protection around them and uh, they live behind that that's tough because every uh, planet that would Jupiter and Saturn and whatever that would otherwise have helped you now what they're helping is creating this armor and the, the, the armor, what I mean by the armor is it's like, um, it's immobile. It's just not so easy to use it to learn things. And not all of us learn all the time. Some of us need a lot of learning to happen to them. Like me. I love learning. I always have and I always will. I'm, I'm just voracious about new information and new uh, new skills and new experiences just bring it on the more the better and uh, but I have this faith right so the only other sign that I want to go in right now is my own um, I share my black moon sign with two other people both males a brother-in-law and an uncle of mine and um, I think we have this uh, sacrifice thing of course, which is Pisces, right? I'm jumping to the sign of Pisces here, from Libra to me, all over to Pisces. Um, there's a, an issue with sacrifice, and as we grow older, and we learn about how, how we can let go gracefully and in awareness of our faculties and in, uh, you know, in relationships and connect with people and sort of make it all worthwhile, then this black moon turns into something positive. And of course, as a little conclusive uh, pronouncement again at the end of this video, I would like to say that there must be, there must be, um, because that's what I think with my black moon in Pisces, right? That there must be a resolution for each apogee position. There must be a possibility in the ideal world right in the in the perfect world there will be a place for you where your armor or your harness or your doubts or your uh, our our lack of anything it is 
our frailties and our uh, stubbornness and our um, lack of activity, our passivity and all that type of stuff where it is uh, suddenly it allows, it opens up into a new possibility, a new, a new life, a new breath, a new, um, a new flow. So, yeah, I suppose I will be coming back to this theme again. I also wanted to do, I prep, I think that's going to be a, a nice idea to do a series or a, a video of some sort where I make the same type of list, but not so much in the signs as the uh, whether there's any conjunctions, whether there's, you know, a planet other than um, the moon itself, maybe even the moon itself as well, um, on the apogee position. So whether Venus is on the apogee, what does that do? Whether Uranus is on the apogee, what does it do? Etc. Uh, I think that's pretty interesting. And there I should also probably, if I want to be, you know, have any attempt at completeness with this type of thing, I should also go into the relationships, the angles and or relationships between, well, in the interesting cases, uh, between the black moon and the normal moon, so the, the, uh, the real moon, right? Uh, the black moon and the sun and the black moon and the ascendant, specifically. Um, so I have quite a bit of work to do. So thank you so much again, guys, for watching me. And uh, if you have um, experience in this field, let us know and uh, we can, you know, chat about it. And um, maybe you have a completely different approach and I'd be enormously curious to, to find out about that. So uh, I will be speaking again soon. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye bye for now.